In the city of Rome case, and I don't want this to get into a, uh, a court argument about different uh, 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 citations, which we could go on all day with. In the city of Rome case, the court did find that that discriminatory impact was was sufficient was sufficient under the Voting Rights Act pursuant to the Fifteenth Amendment. Uh, I'll, I'll yield, yield back, back now, now and who seeks recognition. Gentleman from uh, Louisiana. Well, I didn't see anybody in this. Thing. I was going to ask my colleague from Louisiana that basic question: that if your amendment gets on the bill. Are you going to vote for the bill? Mike? I would be much more inclined to vote for the bill, my friend, but I don't think you're going to pass my amendment, so it's a moot point. Well, you you never know. Um, the, the second thing I would say is, uh, and you talk about intentional discrimination, what your amendment uh, addresses, I guess... The question becomes, so let's say you're Texas or somebody and you pass voter ID that, you know, school ID doesn't count, but a hunting license does count. Uh, do we now have to go into the minds of the legislators if they all meet in the back room and decide that this is what they want to do because this is the effect of it? We need to go find intent? Or does the fact that it hurts the ability for African Americans to go to the polls, is that enough of a reason for you? Or do you need to know that the person did it with the intent to discriminate? Does the gentleman yield to the gentleman? I, I yield. So I was a constitutional law litigator for about 20 years, and you were a, a, a great attorney as well. And, you know, in constitutional cases, they're very fact-intensive, very fact-specific. And that's, that's, I believe that's why the Supreme Court, in good faith, ruled that there has to be a determination on the facts. So if you had a scenario like the hypothetical is you're presenting, if they did that to suppress minority voting, it, it, it should be invalid. Uh, but you have to make a determination on that. And, and we can't allow the DOJ at the federal level with people that work here to make pronouncements about decisions at the local and state levels without digging into the facts. And that's all we're saying because it's fairness. Ultimately, that's what drives all of us. We want fair elections. We believe in voting rights, but we, we have to have a determination of that because that is the safeguard. That's the guardrail. Will, will the gentleman yield? I'll yield back. I'll, I'll yield. Uh, thank you. I, I would ask, uh, just following up from the question from the gentleman from Louisiana, uh, I'm caught between two gentlemen from Louisiana. Uh, I'll ask the other one. Uh, we've seen a situation, situations where, such as the gentleman alluded to, where a voter ID law is required and a college ID from a state university is not permitted, but a hunting license is. Do you think, how would you, the obvious intent, uh, it seems to me obvious, uh, because you got a lot of minority people in university, but perhaps a smaller percentage having uh, gun licenses, of the discriminatory effect. But you prob you might not be able to prove discriminatory intent. How do you get in the minds of the legislature? The effect is obvious. I would think the intent is probably uh, um, not obvious, but uh, obvious, but not maybe legally obvious. Well, can, can I respond? Please. So you might infer that, but, but we don't know the facts. And this is the point. I went to LSU, right? Back in my day, the student ID was the most easily uh, uh, fraudulent uh, document. You can make a fake ID so easy from the LSU student ID. And people used to do it to get into games and stuff, right? But that's different than a state-issued hunting license it, it, in my Would state. Would the gentleman yield for a second? Oh, wait, wait, let me answer this. So, so I'm saying that it depends upon the facts. That's the point. We need a, a court of appropriate jurisdiction, someone who is an unbiased, objective re, uh, reviewer of the facts to look at that. Is a student ID in that particular state as valid and as reliable as a hunting license? Well, then, then maybe there was some ill intent, but we don't know that on the, on, on the face of it. And you and I don't know that in Washington. And that's why we need a court of appropriate jurisdiction to look at that. Well, and that's the point. I yield back. We yield back. I'll reclaim, my, I'll reclaim my time. I would just offer that some things are so blatantly discriminatory on its face that I don't think intent matters. And uh, let's assume when you were at LSU, I know you were all making fake IDs and, and going to the... I did not say I was. It's, it's, it's inferred now. Uh, and, and now that LSU is undefeated, I'm sure that you have a student ID. Amen. Amen. But 
But part of it is um, the question becomes the hunting license. African-Americans are, are very underrepresented in a hunting license. So the question becomes, why do you include a hunting license? One, at all. Two, a valid uh, school ID from a public school. But the question is, why do you include the hunting ID? Why don't we just leave it at whatever the voter ID was? And I think that part of it is if, if something is blatantly discriminatory, the question is really about, do we then have to go prove the intent of the author of the legislation, which will always be some, you know, good natured excuse. And I, I think that that is the biggest concern I have with uh, the amendment and the fact that if I put your amendment on the bill, you wouldn't vote for the bill or you would be, or you, would be you know, you know, less, less likely, likely to vote, to vote against, against it. It's probably, probably not, not enough. enough. And with, with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentlelady from, uh, gentlelady from Georgia. For our purposes, gentlelady seek recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you. With all due respect to my Republican colleagues,